I'm a cultural geographer. I often get asked what that means. Do I study rocks? No, that's geologists. Do I like maps? And I do. But there is more to cultural geography than just maps. In fact, us cultural geographers are a pretty varied bunch and study a variety of phenomena, from city planning to social issues to the cultural traditions of places our country is enemies our allies with. And one avenue for exploration that many cultural geographers utilize is the landscape. And landscape can tell us a lot about a culture. It can reveal aspects of the past, where we're from, how culture has changed, and it can also reveal contemporary circumstances and the, the values that we hold today as a society. And the beauty of reading the landscape is that it is available to each and every one of us to read and to learn from, if we just know a few things to look for. But first, what's the value of reading the landscape? Well, one, we live in it, right? The, the big box stores, the small locally owned stores, the suburbs, the sidewalks, the streets, they're all part of the landscape and guide us in our day-to-day -day living. Two, simply a deeper appreciation for places and the processes that go into creating those places, the people who are involved, the labor that's involved and then knowing that there are individual and community stories that surround each and every landscape. So if we take a look at this building here, the Wool Warehouse, this is in Big Timber, Montana, and it might not look like much of a building, but it stands as a, a reflection of the, the community's heritage in Big Timber and that it was its historical foundation with the sheep industry. And the really neat thing is, if you step inside that building, and it's brick walls all around, and what you'll see, you'll see dates and signatures, some over 100 years old, from anybody who had anything to do with the industry, whether they were wool stompers, shears, herders, ranchers. And so you have this building that's a reflection of the community's heritage in the industry, but then attached to that building, you have individual stories of family, of friendship, of labor, and of that hard work. And so when we know more about the landscape and the meanings behind them, we, we tend to take better care of them and we appreciate them more. And so whether that's a building that's, that makes your community unique or say public lands that surround your community. So what else can we learn from the landscape? What can we look for? Well, we can learn about the past. We can learn about you know, who people are, where they came from. And so one way to do that is look at eth ethnic signatures on the landscape and ask the question, why? So why did a particular group of people settle in a particular landscape? And then in turn, how did they shape that landscape? And how did the traditions that they brought with them, how is it continuing to shape that place identity today? So an example of this would be if we go to Elko, Nevada, northeastern Nevada, and we have the Star Hotel here. You can see it says Basque food. And going back to the why, why did the Basques from France and Spain come to Elko, Nevada? And that goes back to the sheep industry also. They came in the late 1800s, first half of the 1900s, to work as herders. And then other Basques came and they built these Basque boarding houses, which is a combination of a restaurant and a hotel. And they were used to accommodate the herders and provided them a, a home away from home where their languages were spoken, customs and traditions could be carried on. And today, this one, the Star Hotel, built in 1910, remains. And so, although, you know, it's not a... a boarding house are used not a hotel anymore, it is still a restaurant, and those traditions then are still carried on within those walls and also within the greater Elko community. And so when we have these ethnic signatures, whether it is a restaurant or, say, Finnish saunas on the landscape, is a reminder of the culture's heritage. And although that heritage might be reimagined in slight or big, big ways, it's still a, way, a connection to the past and showing that traditions are carried on, and it still shapes those places then today. What else can we learn? We can learn about how culture has evolved and how it's changed. And so if we just meander west of here towards, say, the Avon area, and I'm sure many of you have driven that road before, you've maybe even seen these type of landscapes with uh, big, huge haystacks, right, and the strange contraptions that are next to them. And they're picturesque to be sure, but they also tell us how culture has evolved, how the scale of ranching and farming has evolved, how families and labor have changed. So this used to be a common way to put up hay, but it was also very labor-intensive. It took a lot of people, which wasn't always necessarily a problem. Families were larger, so you could find the labor pool within your own family, within the community, even itinerant labor you could find. Well, then technology evolves, scale evolves, and so families are smaller, and now you can just have one or two people on a tractor and hay bale or put up your hay. And so we can think of our landscape as layers, right? There's going to be aspects of the past, but then there's also the present and our contemporary values. So what do we value? How is that different from community to community? And how, does that, how is that reflected on the landscape? So let's take a look at a local example here in Helena. We have our trails, right? And you have your, your signs, Mount Helena City Park, this way. And so you follow the signs and you go up there. You see a large parking lot. Many times it's filled with cars, so it is being used. You can see that. 
And part of reading the landscape is also seeing how people interact with the landscape. And so you go on the trails and you see the runners and the bikers, the hikers, the toddlers, the organized groups, they're all utilizing the landscape. And that's all, that's all part of this landscape and part of Helena's place identity as a community that's invested in its local trails. And then when you're out on the, on the trails, be sure to look out. There's a lot of different things that you can see. But one thing to take note of is the street patterns. We see our nice straight streets, that nice grid. And there's a connection there that goes all the way back to 1682 in William Penn when he um, laid out the city of Philadelphia. He wanted that grid pattern. And real estate sellers and buyers loved it too because it made the selling of lots nice and easy and convenient. And so we're, we're in Helena, we have our local trails, but we're also Westerners, and so we're surrounded by public lands, from national parks to national forests. And there's a couple different ways we could look at the national forests and read that landscape. What I want to focus on is how they're managed, as lands of many uses. And this isn't a new idea either. This goes back to the late 1800s, early 1900s, when much of the public stewardship of the forested mountain areas fell into place. And so we have our lands of many uses, and that's going to differ depending on which forest you're in. So in this one here, this is in the Pioneer Mountains, and on, right, on one side you have your grazing allotment. So you have cattle grazing, fence separating that from the campgrounds. Others you're going to see like commercial logging and log areas and reseeded forests. And going back to the recreation, just the trails themselves are signs for hunting regulations. And so when we see these signs of many uses, what, what's that saying about our culture? What do we value, whether that's economic values or cultural values? or traditions being carried on, or just like what we like to do in our, in our leisure time, especially as Westerners and, and being outdoor enthusiasts, enthusiasts <laughs> is kind of part of our Western identity. And so we have our landscape, and we can read it from different scales. We can look at it from the international impact on, on local landscapes through such things as immigration, both the past and in the present, that's still happening today. We can also look at national policies on the landscape and how that's impacted places through such things as the public lands. And then we can really zoom into the, the community level and how just look at how people interact with their everyday local landscape. And scholars have said that our landscape is our autobiography, that it reflects our values, our tastes, our preferences, and so that all human landscapes reveal something. But that can be overwhelming, right? We can't know all those answers when we go out and read the landscape. But what we can do is just start to ask questions about what we see. You know, what do we see out there and what does that say about our culture? What does that say about our values? And really looking at just the everyday, seemingly mundane features in the landscape. So for example, our suburbs. What does that say about us? Are they walkable or are they not? Do we have front porches? Are people out there visiting? Or do we value our privacy and all activities take place in the back patio with our privacy fences? And going back to the recreational landscapes, you know, again, we're out west, and so there's plenty of those of our playgrounds, you know, from the campgrounds to the, the hot spring resorts or the dude ranches or the ski resorts. And so what does that say about what we like to do in our leisure time, how we like to spend our money, and so then these, these landscapes of consumption even. And if you're curious about a place or a building in a place, any other type of landscape feature, I invite you to simply ask a local. Most people are so thrilled to talk about their hometown and stories about it and what makes it unique and special to them. And so the next time you're going through a small town and you grab a cup of coffee or you're eating at a local restaurant, simply open up the conversation with a question about the place. And then soon I hope that we can all appreciate road trips and walks more and see that all places are filled with history and significance and that we're just surrounded by a storied landscape. Thank you.